What's up, damn. What's up, Pumpkin Patch? Welcome back to today's edition of Days of Halloween, the spooky and frightening October the 26th. I'm Horseman Nick Moser, and I know what you're thinking. Well, in my mind, in the ideal situation, I know what you're thinking. I've never seen a horror movie a day in my life. So what you're thinking is, why is this guy about to tell us about horror movies? I don't know. Well, let's just get into it. You guys know how this is done. Today we talk about four movies and one haunt that you should check out. Let's get into it. We start with our Halloween classic, 1992's The Candyman, written by Clyde Barker and Bernard Rose, and directed by Bernard Rose. Isn't that that song from Willy Wonka? Or the cover version by Zed Nala Black? It's a good song. We start with 1992's Candyman, a slasher film that introduces us to Helen Lyle, a student in Chicago who is researching urban legends and stumbles upon the legend of the Candyman, a former son of a slave that fell in love with a white woman's daughter and unfortunately had his right hand cut off and met his end at the hands of a lynch mob. Now the Candyman haunts his victims who say his name five times into a mirror. Candyman, 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 Candyman. No, no, no. Once these poor unfortunate souls say Candyman's name five times into a mirror, he appears and haunts them, wrecking havoc and causing chaos in his path. Now Helen Lyle has summoned Candyman, and Candyman has now become obsessed and haunts Helen over the course of the film. The film features an ensemble cast, such as Virginia Madsen, who played Lisa in the film Class, or Lisa in the film Fire with Fire, or Rachel in the film Gotham, or the only thing that I've seen her in, the far less scary Stuart Little Three, Call of the Wild, where she voiced the Beast. The film also stars the legendary Tony Todd, who plays Candyman in this film, but he is also known for playing the roles of Kern in Star Trek, William Bloodworth in the Final Destination series, Sergeant Warren in the film Platoon, and the only thing that I've seen him in as the voice of the Fallen in the far less scary Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. No wait, that movie was terrifying, it, it was awful, it still haunts my dreams. Transformers Revenge of the Fallen, Transformers Revenge of the Fallen, Transformers Revenge of the Fallen, Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. Wait, what am I doing? No, I don't... I don't want to ever see that movie again. Up next is our choice for overlooked horror film, 2006's Hatchet. Not to be confused with the 1986 book of the same name. Trust me, they are not the same. This film is about something I'm sure we all can relate to. Just a couple of college kids that go down to celebrate Mardi Gras in New Orleans and end up taking a haunted boat tour on the bayou. What? Y'all didn't do that in college? Whack. This film tells the story of friends Ben and Marcus who, after their original boat tour of the bayou is canceled, they are offered a far more spooky and sketchy boat tour on the bayou and are joined by a cast of characters such as a married couple, an actress, and a porn star. And a porn star. I've uh, got to research this movie a little more. Just... Anyway, while on the boat tour, the very silent character of Mary Beth tells the group about the legend of Victor Crawley, a boy with a rare disease that was bullied and therefore kept from society by his father Thomas. Well, one night, a group of teenagers came by and started to throw fireworks at Victor Crawley's home, and unfortunately, Victor was killed accidentally by his father Thomas after being hit in the face with a hatchet. Haha, <laughs> I get it, hatchet to the, I get it now. Of course, in a horror movie after being told the tale of a scary and monstrous being, what else would happen other than the scary and monstrous being now haunting the main characters? Now Ben and Marcus and the rest of the group have to spend the movie trying to evade and defeat Victor Crowley. The film features an ensemble cast such as Tamara Feldman, who is known in such shows as Smallville and Gossip Girl. It stars Dion Richman, who played Kenny on NBC's The Cosby Show. And of course, as the character of Ben, it stars Joel Moore, who played Dr. Norm Spellman in the second highest grossing film of all time, Avatar. What's that? Sorry, James Cameron's Avatar. The film also stars a man by the name of Tony Todd, who was known in the 1992 horror film Candyman? No one knows what that movie is. Up next is our pick for the Halloween in-between film, 1991's The Addams Family. Come on, <laughs> we all know that. We all know the jingle, right? It's, um, 
Uh, they're you know, creepy and kooky and um, mis Miss Terry, Miss T Miss Terry. What the hell is Miss Terry? Oh, <laughs> mysterious and, and and spooky, right? We all know it. Come on. Anywho, 1991's The Adams Family is, of course, based off the cartoon by the great Charles Adams and the 1964 television series of the same name. It was written by Caroline Thompson and Larry Wilson and directed by Barry Sonnenfeld. We know the story, we know the characters. The patriarch of The Adams Family, Gomez Adams, has a falling out with his brother Fester and now after 25 years feels remorseful that they haven't seen each other. Well, meanwhile, The Adams Family lawyer, Tully, owes money to Abigail, the loan shark, but notices that her adopted son, Gordon, kind of resembles Fester. So they can talk the plan to pose Gordon as Fester in order to try and attempt to swindle the Adams family out of their wealth. Gomez sort of catches on after a while when Gordon, or Fester, can't recall certain details of their past, but all the while, Gordon, again, Fester, has started becoming close to the family, and by the end, he becomes a part of the family himself. Of course, we've got such great characters as Gomez, Gordon, or Fester, Tully, Abigail, Lurch, The Thing, Grandmama, we have the rest of the Adams Family, Morticia, Wednesday, and Pugsley, and you know, some people say that I bear a striking resemblance to Pugsley. Nah, I don't see it. Fun fact about this film, this film was known for going over budget by five million dollars, much like this video. This here cost four million nine hundred ninety nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars and ninety seven cents. Where'd the other three cents come from? Um, my cheap comedy. And last but not least, our pick for Kids' Choice, the 2004 Disney Channel original movie, Halloween Town High. Man, those were the days. Coming home on Fridays and just sitting down and watching Disney Channel original movies with no cares and not having to worry about pandemics and depression. Anywho, this movie is set two years after Halloween Town 2. And in this movie, the main character, Marnie, wants to sort of work toward uniting and opening that divide. Is that, is that Marnie now? She said I'm doing a terrible job talking about her movie? Why, yes. I would love to meet up later. What a gal. Anywho, Marty wants to open up the divide between Halloween Town and the mortal world, so she proposes a plan to the Halloween Town Council. However, the council is sort of apprehensive due to the legends of the Knights of the Iron Dagger, a group who is believed to want to destroy all things magic. Well, Marty sort of makes a mistake in trying to say that her plan will work and bets her Cromwell family magic on it, which causes the council to agree and tells Marty that if her plan does not work by midnight on Halloween, her family family's magic will be gone. Her family can't possibly lose their magic. They do? Well, then they can't possibly get it back. What? This film stars such great actors and actresses such as the legendary Debbie Reynolds. Who can forget her role as Kathy Selden in Singing in the Rain? Her role as Molly Brown in The Unsinkable Molly Brown? And of course, her role in Our Hearts as our television grandmother. It also stars the voice acting abilities of the legendary Frank Welker, who has voiced such characters as Fred in the Scooby-Doo series, Curious George in the Curious George series, and Garfield on the Garfield show. And of course, it stars Kimberly J. Brown, known for her roles in um, Halloween Town, and Halloween Town 2, and Halloween Town High. And of course, we can't ride off without telling you about today's haunt. The Edge of Hell in Kansas City, Missouri. The one in Missouri. Why must they be so confusing about this? Just one place, please. One Kansas City. The Edge of Hell is a haunted house that takes people through five levels of the depths of hell, filled with phobias and frights, and even the world's longest recorded living snake, Medusa, who's won in a Guinness Award. God, a snake's even doing better than me. Now, the Fall Horseman, we've never been to the Edge of Hell, but it sounds like a really cool place. And of course, if this whole pandemic wasn't happening, I'm sure it would be very high on our list. From Google and from its website, it appears to only be open on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. But as always with any haunted house, make sure to check their website, which you can check this one out at edgeofhell.com and check them out on social media to see all hours, ticket prices, and of course, any safety precautions with the ongoing pandemic. Well, that's about it. Um, you're free from having to look at me, which I know is probably the scariest part of the video. Um, I'll take my check in the mail. Um, as always, don't forget to click or treat. That's where you like, share, subscribe, tell your friends about us, help us out, please. Um, and yeah, I hope you had fun joining me and letting me in and telling you about today's four movies and Haunted House. And um, thank you for joining us on another day of Halloween. Come ride with us. We'll see you next time. Good night.